hey, everybody. It is Jimothy. You know me from that fabulous podcast known as The Brain Cake. But that is not what we have in store for you today on this special edition of Leftovers. We are taking you back, way back, to 2013, November the 16th, as a matter of fact. So when you hear this, this will be practically seven years to the day that this episode was originally recorded and released. Um, It is an episode of I and Jer as J and J. This is an episode from our old podcast. The title of this episode was originally titled Ass Pussy, but due to, um, well, various reasons, I have changed that to what you see now as Craigslist Hell. In this episode, he and I decided we were going to delve into the very best of the Craigslist postings of that time period. So, with that said, I hope you enjoy, and happy listening, you fucks! November the 16th, 2013. I is who I is. He is who he wants to be. It's 6 a.m. in the morning, and we're just going to try and knock one out of the park really fast. Because we're good at that. Hey, hey Jeremy, are you looking for your next awesome roommate? Why? Is it going to be you? No, it's not going to be me. It's, it's, it, her name is Lauren, man. I, I'm reading, I'm reading her, uh, her thing right now. Her thing? Lauren, it's a it's a big uh, poster. Oh, Lauren, your future roommate, and, and like she really wants somebody to live with, and uh, even on her poster, <laughs> she has quotes from people she's lived with. <laughs> Kate says, "I wish I lived with Lauren because she's super trendy and always knows about the coolest bands." And she also knows how to make the best scrambled eggs and mac and cheese ever, and always shares. Shannon says she was a great roommate, clean and considerate. Claire says Lauren was a great roommate, tidy and also a great cook. I miss living with Lauren most on Friday nights. Her impeccable taste to help me get ready to go out. Her skills mixing up cocktails and having a friend to order in with. Heather says, Lauren is a housewife trapped in a hipster's body. She knows how to seriously cook, clean, and party. There's like, uh, there's actually like two more quotes by other people, but it's a picture of her standing next to another girl in a bikini with her face blocked out and inside the bot, inside the the oval says, this could be you. What the fuck? What are you saying? And behind them, uh, I'll tell you in a moment. Um, Behind them though, for some reason, there's a random naked man. Like near the, uh, uh, what is it, the Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco Bridge? Yeah, the big red bridge. Yeah. But her her article says, uh, hey there, I'm a 27-year-old female who just moved here from New York City, where I lived the past four years. I'm originally from Philadelphia, haha, I went to school at Penn State. I'm an art director for a social media agency, and my company transferred me out here to help grow our creative team. I'm very clean and responsible, although my closet might sometimes be a mess, and generally an awesome roommate. I have references, see attached. I like to cook, eat vegetarian, but I'm not offended if you eat meat in front of me. I like to work out, hike, camp, go to music festivals, see shows, drink socially, not aggressively. I'm a photographer on the side. I stay fairly busy and tend not to be home very often. But when I am, would love to cook dinner with roommates and open a bottle of wine. Most of my stuff is in storage right now. I'm currently staying in an air... It's something. I think it's a typo. Oh boy. But I have a decent amount of furniture for my bedroom and a few things we could use in the apartment or not depending on what you already have I can sell whatever we don't need 
I am looking for a room with an awesome female or females who is drama free and clean. I'm looking to move around October the 1st, but I'm flexible when it comes to this. Would love to live in the Mission, Pack Heights, Knob Hill, Castro, Cow Hot. Cow hello. Basically anywhere that isn't the tenderloin where I am subleasing. Save me. <laughs> Actually what I'm looking at it, it's a list of the greatest Craigslist posts. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh my goodness. I wonder what this one is. To the woman I accidentally punched. <laughs> <laughs> It was last Saturday, and I was at the bar. <laughs> My shitty boss made me work late Friday and then early Saturday morning. Then I was laid off at the end of the day. Needless to say, I was pretty upset and in need of a good long night at the bar. I got there straight from work at 6.30 and sat at the bar. You were a, full, you were a few stools down, and there was a few people between us. About 11.30, there was only a few of us left, and you moved down to the stool next to me, and we casually chatted for the next hour before you started making advances at me. First off, I was very drunk at this point. That's important for you to understand. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of two things went horribly wrong here. Either I was so drunk that anything I said was impossible to understand, or you were too drunk to put two and two together. You see, when I kept saying things like, thank you, but I'm not like that, and I'm not gay, it's because I thought you were a man. So naturally, when you, who I thought was a man, tried to kiss me, I believed it was time to fight, and I punched you. <laughs> I admit, I should not have tried any WWE moves after that, but I'm not a very good fighter, and I was in attack mode. <laughs> Enter the large biker type guys playing pool in the back. If I would have known they were your brothers, I would have made out with you even if I thought you were a dude. Long story short, I hope that my three broken ribs and my missing tooth, it's right in the front by the way, are enough to make us even. I would still like to be friends and hopefully we can look back on this and laugh one day. I don't want to date, but we can drink beer and lift weights or fish or something. Hope to hear from you. Oh. God, it's fucking awesome. Why have I not <laughs> looked at these before? This is awesome. Uh, <laughs> Dude, like, Craigslist is just one of those sites. Yeah. You know it's what I mean? It's know, like topics. Yeah, but it's like on crack. It's like... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Oh, man. This one's from Modesto, California. Uh-oh. It's, it's, it's titled, Drunk Girl on My Lawn. Hmm. How's she... Wait, there I wait. Was. How's she gonna read it? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, can continue. There I was, just yesterday. I can remember it so clearly. I woke up around 2 a.m. to take a nice fat leak... Fat league. <laughs> Alrighty. When I noticed your squeaky giggle outside of my window, I looked out my window half naked as an odd mix of shock, disgust, pity, and blush washed over me. <laughs> That's quite an emotional. <laughs> That's an emotional roller coaster right there. First I'm shocked, <laughs> then I'm disgusted, then I feel pity, and now I'm blushing. <laughs> Not only were you a stunning redhead just a little shorter than me with what looked like a curtain and drapery matching combo, but you were also taking a dump and piss on my lawn at the same time. For that, I have to give you props. I don't think I've ever achieved that level of toilet mastery. <laughs> I immediately came out to see if you were all right and needed a ride home. Seeing as this town isn't exactly well suited for what I'm guessing to be an 18 to 21 drunk girl at 2 in the morning. But me coming out in a bathrobe and asking apparently scared you because you started running with a turd still sticking out of your ass. And dove headfirst into my car leaving a dent in it. I told you, I told you to hold on as I was going to shut off the car alarm and get you an ice pack. But I'm not sure if you heard. What I am sure of, though, is you, that you sat on the trunk of my car smearing shit all over it, took off your shoes, oh left God. your half-full smearing-off bottle, and ran like hell. Normally, 
I wouldn't let a girl shit all over my things and put a dent in my car until we've gotten on a first name basis. But for you, I think we could work it out. You know where I live. I wish they would do a follow up article. <laughs> I, I wish somebody. I wish the person replied. I know. <laughs> Like it actually, I just now noticed. You know how there's the share this links over on the mm-hmm. side on a lot of websites. Yeah. It's it's funny that MySpace is still one of them. Oh, Jesus, I just seen that. There's a lot of interesting looking ones on here. Uh, Idiot dog to any home. Uh, Hellcat needs home. Neurosurgeon needed ASAP. <laughs> uncertain uncertain tin uh, tin foil. Free death ray parts. What? <laughs> I gotta click that one. Free death ray parts. Do you have a science degree? Do you think the world would be better if you could just be in charge? Do you want to show those fools at the academy? I'm listing a small section. I'm my bad. I'm listing a small selection of death ray parts as a service to the junior members of the mad science community. This This includes a high voltage power supply suitable for Gauss cannon. Tesla coil, or even just Jacob's ladder use. Three vacuum tubes with emitters rated for soft x-rays. No guarantee of safety made when pumped to hard x-ray levels. But then, is there ever? And a Fresnel lens, approximately 60 inches corner to corner, suitable for solar melting of asphalt, aluminum, and the skulls of your enemies. All this is free for pickup. It's all in one convenient 450-pound package, a Panasonic PT6 G53. Yes, the TV functionality is fine, and until recently I was using it as a second monitor attached to one of my command station commuter, uh, computers. However, times change. Plasma TVs go on discount, and you can pick up this attractive bundle of parts for the low price of free. Please bring minions. It's seriously very heavy. Email to set up a time to meet at the facility. Available evenings after 6 p.m. or any time on the 13th and 14th. Huh. And there's pictures of the TV and the, obviously the guy's overweight in the, overweight in the picture. <laughs> I can't say I didn't see that coming. Uh, a friendly note from your local porn shop worker. Oh dear. It's a rant, apparently. Oh dear. Oh my God. Oh dear. <laughs> we're gonna we're 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 gonna we're gonna we're gonna adventure into this one together. Oh dear. This one's in, this one's in Spokane, wherever I can't I don't know where that is right away, or what state that's in. Fuck if I know. Okay, Jeremy. I know you. Uh, you 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 know people that work in porn stores, don't you? Mm. Or have. Yeah. Me personally, I don't. I just know the Ron Jeremyish looking guy in town, and his and his doofus son that I like because he doesn't ID me. Oh, I always want to work about, in a porn you're shop. Talking about the one toward Jackson. I was towards Knott County, yeah. Like you uh, pass Walmart, go that way. Yep. Yeah, that that's the one my family operates. That's. Your family is awesome. We're part of my family, <laughs> distant cousins of some sort. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Now we're gonna experience these together. Like I said, I just found these like legitimately as we started recording this. But anyhow, dear porn shop slash adult store slash lingerie boutique customers, here are some fabulous tips on how to not completely irritate me. The poor employee just barely keeping her rage in check behind the counter. <laughs> also, some etiquette on how to behave in case your mother didn't teach you. Oh, dear. Do not test the toys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th- for some reason, I have a feeling this would be you. If you were a female working at one of these places, this is you. I just have that feeling. Number one. For the loud, obnoxious 18 to 25 year olds. Yes, I will readily admit that when I see a herd of you coming straight from my door, I roll my eyes and groan. First of all, lose the fucking attitude when I ask to see your ID. No, not your high school ID, slash college ID, slash birth certificate. I need a state issued ID, passport, military ID will also work fine. If you do not have proper identification on your sorry bitch ass, I will, with great pleasure, ask you to leave. Don't get snippy because you haven't been asked before. I am asking you now, and if you look under the age of 40, I am required to. (laughs) 
Why is it that young kids think it makes them look cooler when they laugh really loud and yell everything at one another? It makes you look pathetic and desperate for approval from your peers. Not to mention it scares away my legitimate customers who would have actually purchased something had your dumb asses not shown up. Plus, you rarely, rarely buy anything. Probably for fear that Daddy's Princess will get caught with an illicit purchase on the credit card he no doubt pays for. So please, conduct yourself as adults when you come in. Number two. <laughs> the fucktard mothers that want to bring their baby or toddler shopping. You bitches have got to be kidding me. It's an adult store. There are penises everywhere. Do you really want your infant seeing that? Oh, wait. Yeah, you guys don't care because as long as you get to come shop for lingerie and dildos, you're happy as little clams. Fuck you. Your baby cannot come in. Don't have a tantrum when I tell you this either. Babysitters were created for a reason. Use them. <laughs> they weren't created, actually. I, I think someone just, you know. <laughs> that's that's what I said. Oh, 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 wait. Yeah, that's, that is right. Okay, that's what it read. <laughs> I told you, Matt. This this would be you. <clears throat> Number three, thieves. You douchebags truly are the bane of my existence. When you steal from me, I actually get bitched at by management. Regardless of the fact that I'm alone, busy, and trying to get the store tidied up. Have you morons also failed to realize we have surveillance system that could rival the Pentagon? <laughs> Seriously. I see you put that shit up your shirt, and I'm locking you in and calling Spokane's finest before you even are done attempting to conceal whatever lube, massage oil, vibrator you decide was worth going to jail for. <laughs> Which is exactly where you'll be going, and the owner of my job really likes to press charges. Not to mention has equipped his employees with tasers strong enough to take down a water buffalo. Don't fuck with me. That pair of crotchless panties isn't worth it, I promise. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Don't be nervous about your purchase. Seriously, I will not remember you five minutes after you walk out the door. You young guys don't need to stare at the pocket pussies for an hour before leaving empty-handed. Just buy the thing. I don't give a fuck, I promise. Older ladies who are too embarrassed to ask for help do chill out. Just tell me what you're looking for so we can both be done with this unpleasant experience. You are the one making this awkward. <laughs> it's making me rethink every time I ever go in a sex store because <laughs> I do the same I just stare at things for like an hour and just leave that's why I, I think that's why I always buy like one porn DVD every time I'm in there just just to say I bought something That's so I, I feel awkward if I was without buying anything that's me though <laughs> continue <laughs> Okay. Number five. My darling porn guys. You are a great breed of customer for the most part. You come in quietly, find your DVD, and get the hell out. It works well for everyone involved. However, there are a few of you that like to, quote, browse for two fucking hours. That's a bit much, don't you think? Please just come in to the store with a general idea of what you want to jerk it to. Because I have to wait for your fickle ass to leave before I can have a cigarette. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe, like, I didn't even read that before I got on that diatribe about buying DVDs. <laughs> uh, it makes you look like, what the fuck are you doing? Reading the synopsis on the back of the fucking DVD? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking to see who's in it. <laughs> yeah, but you do legitimately do that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I. That that's what I base a lot of it off. I was like, oh, I, I know that I know that one, that one, that one. I, I don't know that one, but I'm willing to give it a try because I know these other ones. <laughs> yeah, folks, I'm one of those people that buys porn DVDs. I know I can get it on the internet for free, but I just like to have physical copies. Hey, you never know when the internet's gonna go down. <laughs> that's gonna be fantastic. Jim's still gonna be sitting at home fapping. Everybody else is gonna be like, oh my god. <laughs> That, yeah, and who's going to be coming up to my house going, hey, man, you got anything I can, you know. <laughs> now who now who looks like the dummy? Right. <laughs> In the apocalypse, okay. Jim will be the porn master. That's right. <laughs> Everyone else is going to be scavenging for food while I'm going to be on the black market selling porn. <laughs> what are you going to play it on? Nothing. You can just, I, I'll save the case. <laughs> there you go, the pictures. That's all you need. When all else fails and electricity is gone, you can still fap to the cases. Yep. 
So that makes me feel better. I, I guess I'm not a bad customer. <laughs> I don't browse for two hours, but it's like, yeah, if they were situated better, like in the stores that are around here, if they were put better, like in placements, like if there was a label for like what they are, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, like anal. So you... Yeah, anal, hardcore. BDSM, yeah. hardcore. That would make things so much easier. <laughs> like, really, I could be in and out of there and lickety sw- <laughs> Like, you have lesbian porn, gay porn, BDSM, hardcore. Gay porn. Oh, yeah, they sell plenty of gay porn. Did not, A lot of gay porn. Did not know this. Yeah, believe me, they have some of the most comical uh, DVD covers on the planet. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> oh, dude! One of them, one of them I seen up there is like two Asian dudes, and he's got his cock like rammed away up his ass, and the guy's making a very funny pain face. And the 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 the, the, the DVD was titled "Me So Horny." Oh my god! <laughs> That's so. Horrible. I love porn covers. Like I, porn titles are the best things ever. Honestly, I'm, I hate to say it. But when I'm looking to download a porn, if I don't like the title, I generally won't even check it out. Like, I won't even see who's in it or what it's about or anything. If it's too cheesy. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, it just... Except for... I won't, even, I won't even download the ones that are like... What are they called? Like, they come in installments, like... Um, I, I like a... Big Tits at Work, Volume 1, Volume yeah. 2, Volume 3, it's Volume like, 4, that, that sort of yeah. thing. Why? If you've seen the first one, you've seen volumes. all of them. Yeah, I think it's just different actresses, actors. I think that's the only difference. Yeah. Uh, listen to me, I called porn stars actors and actresses. Well, they are. LOL. Yeah, yeah but in a different, in different way. Performers. <laughs> <laughs> They're performers. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're sports entertainers. <laughs> <laughs> They're like John Cena. Oh dear. They're sports entertainment. You can't see him. His time is now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm almost done here. It's number six, stoners. You are a wonderful group of customers. You are always pleasant, laugh at my jokes, and usually make a purchase. My only complaint is that at times you guys smell like you're carrying a dead skunk around with you. <laughs> Roll down your car windows and for breeze, friends. Good lord, y'all reek. <laughs> and number seven, which is last. Okay, this is this one is bound to piss off some people, but I don't give a fuck. At my adult store, we try to carry things for the BBW shopper, a.k.a. Fatty Friendly Store. Oh, I'm glad she did that because I was about to sit here and explain to her listeners if they don't know what BBW is, I was going to tell them. But yeah. She just, did, she just did it in more blunt terms. <laughs> Isn't it, doesn't it actually stand for, like, big, bo- big bodied women? I always thought it stood for big breasted for some reason. I did too when I was younger, but it stands for big beautiful women. Oh, big beautiful. Yeah, the, aka they're bullshitting themselves again. But she's being nice about it, just saying, or not nice, she's being right. a jerk about it and saying fatty friendly store. <laughs> However, please be reasonable when shopping. <laughs> Lingerie runs small, okay? <laughs> I wear a size small and a 6'8 pant at normal pant. Why pant? Pants. Pant. Let's not get into the debate about the singular and plural form of pants. At my work, I wear a large and usually cannot pull off the box lingerie, so no need to scream, cry, or freak out when I recommend that your 240 pound ass may not fit into a size medium. Also, no. I do not feel like taking 30 minutes to try to squeeze all your rolls into a corset, hon. It's not going to help you. You will just look like a walrus in rubber bands. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, people like this make me feel better about my job. Just because I, I, there's people out there that can relate to me in, like, just aggravation. Make you look like a walrus in rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best oh. fucking imagery. <laughs> okay, I gotta start that over. Hun, it's not going to help. You would just look like a walrus in rubber bands. Please let me put you in that shit you... F- Please let me put you in shit that will fit. Your man doesn't care what the tag says, but he will care if you have more rolls than Pillsbury coming out of lingerie that's too small. <laughs> 
please please note that for the most part I like my job <laughs> it is not my calling in life but pays the bills while I sort out my 20s a bit <laughs> I really do like most of my customers and enjoy helping others find ways to have a more fulfilling sex life if you all come in and treat myself and my coworkers with kindness, respect, and are not terrified of us, we will do our best to make it the easiest shopping experience of your life. To the aforementioned groups of people I was ranting about, well, you know who you are. Fix your shit and come back and see me. I don't remember you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember their traits, not exactly who they are. Yeah, if you want to look at the site, here's a... Uh, that, that was the one I was just reading to you, but it's... Anyone that wants to look at it, it's www.craigslist.org. Not craigslist.com. But it, the, it, the thing is the best of Craigslist. Uh, wanted crazy roommate. Wanted mule named Sal. <laughs> so anyways, uh, you just mentioned BBW, so I gotta go into this in case you didn't know it. Oh, um, oh no. <laughs> We finally have the 2013 Miss Bum Bum competition winner. Wait, what? What? What is this competition? Um, every year Brazil holds a competition to find the woman with the largest bum in Brazil. I love Brazil. This year, a 25-year-old model with a 42-inch bottom was named Brazil's new Miss Bum Bum. Dia Macedo. That's a big ass. Isn't that a porn star? I'm not for sure. She may be. but uh, I swear that sounds like a porn star that's name. That's a 42-inch ass. That's not really that huge. I've seen some big ass. That's about normal in Brazil. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, that, um, I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude. What? Oh my god! <laughs> look at this picture. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, as you look at that, I'm gonna read the article to you. What? No, not article, but this is this is this is a Craigslist ad called Magical Horse. What? You see the picture, what right? The, what am I looking at? Do you see it? Yes, I, I see this okay. picture. Just look at that as I read this to you. Hello, this is my lovely horse, Legacy. He has been in my family for five years. He truly is a wonderful creature. At night, his mane glows like the brightest of Jupiter's moons. It is what we in the horse world call magical. I give him daily protein shakes to make sure he continues to grow big and strong. I don't know when he'll stop growing. He'll probably continue to until his time comes. Please be prepared to accommodate a horse the size of a small tank if you plan on keeping him for more than a month. I feed him a strict diet of cucumbers and horseradish. Some people say that it's sick to feed a horse horseradish, but since horseradish doesn't actually have horse in it, I'm sure it's okay. Uh, 800 oboe, if you have any albino chickens, we may be able to adu uh, to negotiate. Or $800 worth of Fred Meyer's gift card so I can continue to buy horseradish for my other horse. In order to ensure you're not spam, please say you have a magnificent steed on your hands I'd like to obtain. I'm pretty sure no telephone operator from overseas can say that correctly. <laughs> He looked like a magnificent steed. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know if this guy's trolling or if that's legitimate. It's an Anchorage, Alaska, so I'm sure it's legitimate. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Dumpster lover. Dude, if you want me to stop reading these, just let me know, but... <laughs> I'm actually finding these entertaining. Better than some of the stuff I found. <laughs> okay, this one's called Dumpster Lover. This one is from uh, Minneapolis. I was running from an alien. <laughs> oh, it's off to a good start already. <laughs> I was running from an alien, and I jumped into an alleyway dumpster to hide, and you were there napping, and I woke you up. We shared some... We shared some something out of your flask, and we laughed and talked about comets coming our way with, and grilled cheese. You called yourself Blump, but I had to go poop, so I went to a gas station down the road, and when I came back, you were gone. 
Just wanted to make sure the alien didn't track my scent and find you instead. Hope you're well. Meet me at the dumpster behind McDonald's tomorrow for lunch. What the? <laughs> uh, you know, if the guy was sleeping in a dumpster, I'm pretty sure he's he's not going to use a computer. Right? You know, that's just my opinion. <laughs> oh man, butt pumpkin, uh, feline lap surrogate. What? <laughs> Rare opportunity for base candidates. Free things. Um, extra large cow flavored dog bed. Missed connection. Oh, that one thing interested me. I didn't look at it though. Neurosurgeon needed ASAP. Yeah. Uh, are you curious about it? Because I am. Yeah, I really am. <laughs> okay. I, I'm like, I know it doesn't sound like you're enthusiastic, but I know the circumstances as to why you're kind of low tone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello. I would like to trade a 2006 Mustang GT for the removal or suction of an egg-sized brain cyst. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Um, the Mustang GT is white with gray leather interior, tinted windows, AC, electric windows, and seat. Automatic transmission has all the bells and whistles, including a new DVD touchscreen deck, shaker 500 sound, and less than 40,000 on the odometer. The cyst is behind my right eyeball and looks fairly easy to get at. I try to get at it myself, but I've been trembling and had to ba had too bad of a headache to attempt any solo surgery. Well, good job, genius. Don't commit surgery on yourself. Dork. Dork. I don't know. The man has a cyst, and here I am making fun of it. <laughs> it's okay. He's defective. He must be defective. <laughs> You're looking for a neurosurgeon on Craigslist. You have to yep. be. Yep. I mean, I don't have what's, any, what's oh, the neurosurgeon looking for on there? A new set of legs? Like, I'm looking for someone to study. <laughs> I'm looking for a new brain for a patient. Because that's yeah. the perfect place to find them. Craigslist. <laughs> you won't get any good ones, though. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I don't have insurance, but I've had the same job for the last 16 years. I would have got a new job, man. Right? <laughs> I need I need help, but the system is hard to work through. Two hundred and sixty dollars or more every time I talk to a doctor. Yeah, if you had insurance, that wouldn't be that big of a problem. <laughs> and every doctor I have talked to wants to take blood tests and prescribe drugs that have not helped. All my blood work over the last three years has been normal. The cyst is the only abnormal thing I have. I can borrow money and sell the car. I'm using this ad as a latch dish, last ditch at uh, the fuck. Easy for me to say. I'm using this ad as a last ditch attempt to get help. If you know a surgeon willing to look at my records, I will mail them and the DVD with two brain scans. I'm going to loose everything if someone can't help me. I don't want and have been denied Medicaid because I want to work, but it's getting harder to do the things I like to do. Thanks. We'll email extra pics of the Mustang and Cyst on request. <laughs> Alrighty. And he has pictures of his Cyst. And the Mustang. Huh. That's a nice car, actually, <laughs> dude. If you can afford that car, I don't know why you're not getting surgery. But yeah, that's... That, that's, a, that's a big Cyst. <laughs> um... I'm oh, sorry, I have to, this, this is just, uh, this title caught my eye. Yeah, lousy sex, but it was your fault. <laughs> Living room. Eyes clinking in our drinks. Your lips glistening in the dim candlelight. A soft scent of fine perfume. A silent thunderstorm of desire. Then you did the unimaginable. You poured the rest of your vodka into a small plastic aquarium where my sea monkeys live. I panicked but tried to look calm. You slid down the zipper of your slinky black dress, but I had one eye on the sea monkey village as the vodka infused their magical little world. <laughs> fine, fine Satan underwear, you tossing back your long silky hair, but I couldn't turn away from the turmoil they were now experiencing. Stumbling through their little sea monkey village, singing, uh, singing firework loud, and off-key, yelling, I love you, man, down the streets of Sea Monkey Village. 
I was distracted. I couldn't focus on what we were doing. I know it wasn't good. Can I get a do-over? <laughs> Just, I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm really enjoying these articles. You have no idea. Required Dragon Slayer. Drunk Daughters 2007 BMX. What the Summertime fuck? Romance. I don't know. Free birthday hat for a dog. Handsome black man in convoy. Well, apparently, uh, you know how we always say no other animal would stop and fuck a dead animal? Uh-huh. Well, apparently dolf- dolphins will stop and fuck a, a dead fish in its mouth. What? <laughs> in its mouth? Well, where the fuck else is a dolphin supposed to stick its dick? In its, in its gills? I don't no, know. Well, it, it's in its mouth. <laughs> Are you sending me pictures? No, the, the, click the Huffington Post link. There's a 45 second video of this dolphin. Like literally, it's got its it's got its fin on the glass. Like it is severely enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> Narrate this video for me. <laughs> I like the title of it: Dolphin masturbates with dead fish in rather horrifying video. <laughs> Let me know when you click play. Uh, in three, two, one. Wait. Dolphin self-masturbates with beheaded fish? No, the, the fish definitely has a head. <laughs> well, I was, I was reading the title. It says be, beheaded, but... Okay, I'm clicking it now. Okay, what's it doing? The music? <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Why? Look at it, though. It's severely enjoying this. This is a, it's like, I'm more disturbed oh, by the yeah. dolphin's peak. <laughs> I'm more disturbed by its penis. <laughs> it's got its hand up. <laughs> it's got its hand on the glass bracing itself. It's like, yeah, get some. <laughs> you it's, like that, don't going, you? <laughs> <laughs> this music's too intense. <laughs> oh, dude, it's just like, there's, this fish is, it's helpless. It's dead. It's, like, it's, it, it's stabbing it from the end out to its ass. Oh, I know. What, man? Why did it stop? Kind of makes you wish it was longer. I do. It was only forty-five seconds. But that's that's something, man. That that uh, that needs everyone needs to see that once. Yep. Everyone. That's awesome. I'm glad you sent that to me. <laughs> oh God. Um, I did see one that I was gonna read to you, but. I don't think really have any uh, interest in it. It's basically just a church seeking a new god. What? That was one of the ads on here. Is a church seeking a, a a new god or a new deity? Um. Okay. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Thanks for shitting your pants. Um. Lost tripod in a sewer. We found your beer pong. Computer repair man. Oh, this is this is you. Well, let's read this. Oh God. Does your computer not work as well as it used to? As it used it? Is it used it? That's. A, I'm only going by what they write. <laughs> but you were scared to bring it to someone to get it fixed because you don't want anyone seeing what you've downloaded. I fix computers for one for under one hundred dollars. Completely confidential. I don't even look at your files. I just wipe out the hard drive and and reinstall Windows. Your computer will be as good as new. <laughs> well, then what's the point? Uh, I think that's the point of the the ad there. Yeah, but I mean, um, what if they want to keep their porn? Are you gonna Are you against backing up their porn collection for them? <laughs> I'm not. It's possible. I'm a hundred percent legit. Hell, I, I might even give you some if you ask nicely. Oh my God! I feel like I've just found something amazing. What is it? The the article or the well the the Craigslist thing. It, it this is from San Antonio. Uh, the the it's titled "No More Sex with Fruit." <laughs> it's it's quite lengthy, so I'm imagining it's something good. These well that porn one is pretty fantastic to me. But <laughs> makes me want to read this article about the guy getting locked up for fucking cow shit. <laughs> like it just sounds it sounds so goofy how you just worded that <laughs> it's like fucking cow shit then you stop and process like wait he was fucking cow shit exactly <laughs> <laughs> not like he, not like that was the state of his mind like cow shit but like he was he was humping cow feces 
Brett, there and then go. he threatened to kill the farmer and his family after they tried to ban him from going on to the, the land to get the cow shit. That's awesome. Oh, no, right? <laughs> oh, man. Wait. So, well, my question is, did he use a condom? Um. That, it seems, that's like, doesn't this just seem like an important question that you should ask? If if you're gonna if you're gonna stick your your pecker in poop, I would wear some sort of protection. Cause man, you you imagine how many germs well, just like living in. I mean, come on, you mushrooms grow on cow shit. <laughs> some of them. Right. I mean, I wouldn't fuck cow shit, but if you do anal, you can do anal without a condom and not, you know. I mean, yeah, but like if they, if they've like douche it or something, you can anyway. It doesn't really have any. I know, effects. I know, because you mostly just gotta, as long as you're not fucking stabbing their colon, <laughs> should be okay. At, at the most, anyway, I would suspect it only causes like a, a UTI. <laughs> oh God. Uh, well, I've been down that road. I don't want to do that again. Right. Anyways, move on. Yeah, this uh, I have to read this like if, if for anyone that's listening, which I don't even know why sh I'm pre prefacing this or whatever. Yeah, they're they're like, gonna I, listen I, apparently. Like I, I'm just like it's I believe it's graphic. I've I just kind of skimmed it. <laughs> I believe it. But it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I I know the people that listen to this thing. And so if the, if they've listened to us at least once and they keep coming back, then they should not have a problem. You're right. But, uh, but anyway, it all started when I started dating this woman whom I was crazy for. I had been in love with her since high school. From time to time, she would want me to stick a banana in her before sex to get her in the mood. At first, it was awkward. It eventually got to a point where I was, was also having sex with fruit as, as a kind of foreplay. Don't judge me. I was head over heels for this woman and would do anything to make her happy. Ladies and gentlemen, men, if you're listening, take this man as an example. <laughs> don't let these women just <laughs> manipulate your brain. Don't don't let these women tuck you into having sex with fruit. Exactly. Cause I mean, like this, then, I think this is this is an extreme example. <laughs> they'll make you go fruity, literally. Uh, 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 you did it. I did it. You did it. You did it. Couldn't resist. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad. You, you fruity man, you. Anyway, don't judge me. I was head over heels for this woman and would do anything to make her happy. I never let her know in the beginning I was a little, no a little annoyed and jealous that a banana was penetrating her wet vagina. Then I also never told her in the beginning how odd and freaky I felt the first time I stuck my penis into an orange. Um, that sounds like that might hurt. <laughs> what happens if the orange juice goes up your pee hole? Can you imagine Ow. the pain? Oh Ow. my god. <laughs> it's like lime <gasps> juice. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? I don't know. Why? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, well, he 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 kind of answers your question in a way because the next statement says, "Although I did like her licking off the juice afterwards." Whoa. Sure. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. Mm -mm. Also. <laughs> Oh man! I mm -mm. I also never told her after countless times bring fruit into our bedroom that I started to like it. That I, and that, I sometimes had sex with fruit while she was away at work. So that time you got upset that the last apple was missing, and Jeffrey really didn't come over to visit and ate it. I had sex with it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this Jeffrey character? And why is he coming over and eating your fruit after you have sex with it? <laughs> I think I think you may have misheard me. No, I, I heard you. I just wanted to. <laughs> okay. I think Jeffrey should have been eating the sex fruit. <laughs> he should have had sex with it first before Jeffrey came over. Yeah. Like he just pumps a hole into it, fucks it, and then just like puts the like puts the core back in it or something. Hey Jeffrey, you want my sexy apple? <laughs> <laughs> my sexy apple. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyways, moving on. 
then, <laughs> then one day she left me. Mm. That's when I grew into a deep depression. <laughs> we all know those feels. Started here. shoving banana up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's being amazing atheist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> however, that depression did not stop me from continuing to have sex with fruit. Mm. I was completely satisfied, even in my depressed state. If you cut the correct size hole into anything, it could be magical. Oh, I, somehow I doubt that. <laughs> when I ejaculated, I of course would throw it away. Mm -hmm. But there, <laughs> I'm glad for that. <laughs> he ate it. Don't let him lie to you. <laughs> he's he's eating like semen-filled peaches. <laughs> but there was one time or two the sex was so amazing I kept it around for another go. What? That just, no. No, you got <laughs> off in it. <laughs> no, I mean, I know I know, jizz will dry out, but not, not inside of a fruit, because fruits have, like, you know, juice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can circulate and move. Oh, uh, no, but that just sounds absolutely fucking disgusting. <laughs> then came the day when I got over the evil woman who had broke my heart. <laughs> I started to hate everything about her. My eye started to doubt whether or not I should continue to enjoy having sex with fruit since she introduced me to it. Around that time, I was very confused on what I should do next. I happened to see the evil witch. And I think he meant what I should do the next time I happened to see her. But anyhow, I happened to be on a different side of town and needed to run to the store for some fruit roll-ups. Ironic, I know, for my niece's lunch the next day. I strolled into the grocery store like nothing. I was just about to make a, com a comment inside my head how ghetto the store was when I saw her. I had heard rumors that she moved on and was seeing someone, but this time she was solo. I pretended I did not see her, but it was too late. She spotted me. Damn! I knew I should have gone to another checkout lane. I said hello, and he had a forced short, or something, forced short conversation. I could not help but notice the fucking fruit she was buying. <laughs> you fucking cunt. Like I am not supposed to know what those bananas, apples, and oranges were for. I was pissed. I decided no more fruit with sex. That was the final straw. Fuck that bitch and her kinky sexual outlets. <laughs> that lasted all but a few days, but then I began to get horny. No, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I tossed all the fruit out my window. I was done. I had never paid for sex. I wasn't exactly sure how to go about doing that without getting caught. So that was out of question. I need stimulation. I needed something. Then as a spontaneous desperate act, I slammed my penis into the peanut butter. <laughs> the... the, the <laughs> What the fuck was he doing? Making a peanut butter sandwich? <laughs> he was like, oh god, that looks really good. Slam. I <laughs> know, right? He suplexes cock or something into the jar. Oh, I'm gonna boy. fuck this peanut butter's brains out. <laughs> the soft, sticky goo made me melt inside. What was this utopia of sexual pleasure that I had discovered? I did not know what was more pleasant. Pleasing. The sex with the peanut butter jar or having the dog lick it off afterwards. Oh, God. <laughs> so to my ex. Fuck you. I am over you and over sex with fruit. I have moved on myself to a new avenue of pleasure, and it doesn't involve anything you ever taught me. <laughs> Just your own sick and twisted. <laughs> like I said, I don't even know how many of these are serious. I know. It's Craigslist, but, but still... I mean, like it's not. That's that's one of the reasons that makes me think that it could be is because it's Craigslist. <laughs> There's all sorts of defects running around on. Uh, oh my god! I just seen something that just says sodomy is as misunderstood as is, as it is misapplied. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Hi, if you or your horse lost a very large pile of horse poop, I found it. <laughs> Man. Wait. Uh, found. Shirt, bra, thong, and vomit. Mm, ew. I saw your breast by accident. <laughs> Just, these people crack me up. Because they're so... 
like how they describe it, it's such a magical thing. I just happened to be walking my dog in the Atwood area when I looked up at an apartment building and you were standing at your window topless, perfect as a figure cut out of a painting, your breast so firm and yet plump, in a way that suggested you would yield to the right touch. I went home and listened to a classical music, listened to classical music for an hour, trying desperately to recreate the feeling I had when I saw your breasts in the window. That transcendent serenity one feels only in the presence of art. When the music didn't work, I baked a cobbler, peach, my grandmother's most prized recipe, and sat on the floor of my living room, eating it with my hands, savoring not only the taste, but the warmth of the feeling and the just right flakiness of the outside. I could have been in the remotest land on earth, untouched by civilization. My perception felt that pure. All afternoon I've been floating inside. Those breasts were a minor miracle in the midst of this gray, cold week. Thank you. Hmm. I'm slightly happy for this man, but slightly angry. (laughs) <laughs> human soul in parentheses black friday special <laughs> fuck oh no i lost my links no i didn't i'm sorry i don't know if there's really anything else we need to get into <laughs> the robot where people get to play with somebody's ass the robot that plays with people's ass no it's, it's a robot ass that people get to play with Oh, so it's like an ass pussy. <laughs> a pocket ass. No, it's it, they designed it to teach doctors mannerisms of how a patient might act. Like, there's a virtual patient on the screen, and as they check the, the robot's colon, if they do it incorrectly, the virtual person on the screen will, like, wig out or whatever. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> Not ass pussy, Jim. Oh, uh, at what? Uh, can we make an ass pussy? Can we? Can we? Get, can we get on that? Let's go for it. <laughs> we should. Sex duel with the neighbors. Sex duel. Yeah, with the D-U-E-L neighbors. D u e l or d u a l. D u e l. So they're like fighting. Yeah. I guess, or fucking their neighbors. I don't know. Fucking with the neighbors. <laughs> hmm. My girlfriend and I live below you. A while back, we were waking up one morning to some weird noises. Kind of like some squeaks at a pretty even pace. I thought it was a ceiling fan or something. Well, it only took a minute to figure out what was really going on. The female moans helped to narrow down the possibilities, and the long, deep groan at the conclusion of this session pretty much sealed it. We heard you having sex. (laughs) Dot, dot, dot. We giggled, and were kind of embarrassed, but wouldn't you know it, it got my girl in the mood, and we began having sex, too. (laughs) Now, my girlfriend has a pretty neat sense of humor. So to make things more interesting, she started making some noises exactly like we heard coming from above. Taking her cue, when I delivered the goods, I managed to let out a beast of a man groan that shook the foundation of our apartment. (laughs) We had to put pillows over our faces to muffle the laughter. (laughs) I wish wish sex was just this fun. I know, right? (laughs) Uh Maybe we're just not doing it the right way. (laughs) The next time we heard you... We couldn't help but join in. We started before you were even finished. When we heard things from above, we would beckon a response. Soon we were trying to push the envelope and totally outdo you, with moans and cries and screams of pleasure that I'm sure probably caused some commotion. It became sort of a fun contest for us to outsex you, making sure we lasted longer and were much louder than you. We would do it against the wall, hoping that you could feel the pounding. Apparently, we had some sort of competitive drive that we really fed off. It was fun. Then one time, we were in the process of outdoing you when we heard massive noise from above. We paused for a second to get a better better listen. What we heard was indescribable. It sounded as if the entire cast was upstairs having an orgy, 
trapeze, elephants and all. We were astonished. Were you returning fire? Had our little game turned into a contest? Were we losing? What was going on up there? How could two people make so much noise? Or did you contract in some outside help? We had to regroup. We brainstormed possible ways to gain the upper hand. We could only do so much with our voices. And it wasn't fair because you have the obvious advantage of being upstairs. Needless to say, we came up with some ideas. Yesterday morning, we heard you two stare. Uh, we heard you two starting to go at it. My girlfriend took off her shirt and mounted me. I must say that her competitiveness is attractive and scary at the same time. What followed was some of the craziest sex we've had: headboard slamming, yelling, squeals of pleasure, cries of pain and anger, high-profile spanking. We grabbed a broomstick and started hitting the ceiling with it as we fucked like crazy. What the fuck? <laughs> you, however, were just as impressive, and we could hear the craziness above us as we pushed ourselves to be wild as possible. Soon we heard you yell words like, harder, and my girl would yell back, deeper, which would soon be followed by, fuck me, <laughs> which, would, which we would reply, fuck my ass. It was at this point when I had a mental image that would result in this note being written. I imagined what we all must look like having sex at the same time, yelling, pounding the floor and ceiling and whatnot. We were basically participating in group sex. What started out as a small competition had gotten way out of control. What did our neighbors think? I couldn't help but start to laugh. We give up. You win. You win the sex duel. It's been fun, and I'm grateful for you, or I'm grateful to you for keeping my sex life interesting. But I just don't have the strength mentally and physically to keep up. Now, let's all just go back to having normal sex. Respectfully, your neighbor downstairs. Maybe we'll meet in person sometime. <laughs> that sounds fun. I know, right? It does. Okay, um... What? I think, actually, I think one more has just caught my eye. It's, it's titled, Homophobia is Hot. <clears throat> okay. Okay. You say, two guys in your 30s, both wearing gray pinstripe suits, po uh, possibly lawyers, based on your conversation. Me, a woman in my 30s, also wearing a professional dress. The scene. A New Haven Line Metro North train. This morning. Action. I enter a crowded train. The only seats available are the middle sections of the three seaters. I walk to the end of the car and say politely, May I sit there? Guy number one immediately moves over into the middle seat to continue his conversation with guy number two. The problem... I realize when I go to sit down that guy number one hasn't actually moved all the way into the middle seat. He is still about six inches away from guy number two. This means I have to squeeze into three-fourths of a seat. I try not to breathe too deeply. It's a good thing I don't have a newspaper to open or I'd accidentally smash guy number one in the face while turning the page. But I keep my elbows to my sides and scroll through emails. Occasionally I shift by I shift but guy number one doesn't budge. I resolve to go to Bikram Yoga more often. You know, to lose all that water weight that's bulking me up. My realization You were clearly concerned about allowing your thighs and shoulders shoulders to touch those of your friend. This is wise and I was being insensitive. A man a straight man should never allow himself to have fully clothed completely public non-sexual body on body contact <laughs> with the same sex friend <laughs> oh everyone knows what kind of friends are we I know right <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows that gayness is more communicable than swine flu is it my proposal let's have a threesome email me and we'll get it on what that was uh, a Fair, uh, Fairfield County, Connecticut. <laughs> My proposal. Let's have a threesome. Yeah. yeah. What, what? Email me and we'll get it on. I like it. How, I don't know why that felt like it was from the 1940s. 
Just the scene she was painting to me. I know. Which one do you want to go with? Or like, which one do you want to end the show on? A letter to my dead girlfriend or to the girl I had drunk sex with last <laughs> night? <laughs> uh, the dead girlfriend. Okay, we'll end on that one, but uh, for some reason I just can't pass on a drunken sex thing. <laughs> Um, to the girl I had drunk sex with last night. Drinking in the in the U district sure is fun, isn't it? You can end up doing the craziest things, such as getting drunk and stumbling home with an equally drunk co-ed. Oh my god, I was so wasted. I don't remember meeting you. I don't remember taking the bus with you. I assume we took the bus, as neither of us were in any position to drive. My apartment is a good five miles from where we drank, which would be far too long a walk when sober. I do remember briefly talking in the bar, although I don't know what about. I remember us naked in my living room. I hope we kept our clothes on until we entered my apartment. <laughs> we drank some more at my place, I think. Everything is very hazy. You were hot and a senior from a sorority. That's great. I think that made the sex better somehow, because I don't remember much. But I think we had amazing, albeit sloppy, sex for a long while. May I take a second here to congratulate myself on staying hard despite so much alcohol. <laughs> you did well, too. It was fun. Then, then we fell asleep. I woke up with a massive headache and an, and an inability to recall the previous night. You were gone when I woke up. All traces of you vanished. I was merely a one-night stand for you. I don't regret it, though. I just have two questions. What's your name? And can I have my wallet back, please? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? And can I have my wallet back, please? <laughs> uh, that's in Se if, if we have any listeners in Seattle, please get up with this man. Yes. He needs your assistance. <laughs> We're just going to go out on a letter to my dead girlfriend. Dear dead girlfriend. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a rough year, darling. <laughs> that's, really, that's really how it starts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It has been a rough year, darling. The ethereal power of Craigslist will get this message to you, I am sure. <laughs> like in some sort of cheesy 80s movie. <laughs> well, back to the last year. You, of course, died at the beginning of, of it, which put things to a sour start. I spent last night with your mom and dad, and we went to that Italian place in Wicker Park, who on the surface seems to be coping. I had everyone get together for my 25th, which went well. Your ladies are on top form, and I think some engagements are brewing. Ellen is turning up the heat on Steve, who will soon be forced down to one knee, as you predicted. Last weekend, I finally took the step of cleaning out your clothes from my closet, which is very barren now. I invited your friends over to take what they liked. It was an awkward session. I think they took them more as a favor to me than anything else. Liz cried when we pulled out all your shoes. Miranda joined in, and then Catherine broke down. It was strange to stand in her bedroom surrounded by three crying girls. I made a joke about them crying for joy at the prospect of some free Manalo Bognics, which they didn't seem to find very funny. A few girls have put the moves on, and as you know, picking up women is not a forte of mine. It seems the grieving boyfriend seems to be a good angle. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> I went on one date and spent it talking about you, the poor girl. You would have found it quite witty, I think. No other dates to report. I'm going against your orders to move on for now. I found one of those hair tie things that somehow managed to squeeze into every crevice in the apartment. <laughs> it was under the bed. I sat on the floor holding it and cried. Until then, I had held everything together, but it all just came flooding out. Every morning when I wake up, I forget for a fraction of a second that you are gone and I reach for you. All I ever find is the cold side of the bed. My eyes settle on the picture of us in Paris, on the bedside table. And I am overjoyed that even though the time was brief, I loved you and you loved me. It's a good note to go out on and uh, on death. Um, <laughs> it's an uplifting topic. We're killing the show. No, uh, we're killing the show with a bunch of dicks and cocks and dead it, people. Listen, if they make it through this show as dull as it seems like it was, yeah, more power to them. 
Yeah, you guys, you guys are troopers. If you just sat here and listened to it, we didn't have much to go on, but well, damn it, we got to pump something out. Right. <laughs> Everyone, we're out. Take care of your ass pussies, and play with your dicks and cocks, and play with your dicks and cocks, and play with your dicks and cocks, and play. With your dicks and cocks, and play have it folks wasn't that fun wasn't that neato burrito wasn't that the bee's knees didn't that just make you want to cream in your jeans i mean if it did then you probably need psychiatric help and you should probably put this podcast down once and for all that was a throwback to j and j talk show days way back in 2013 as i stated in the introduction of this episode um if you enjoyed this by chance do let us know. We may uh, pull back some of these old, old J&J episodes from back in the day. Uh, we have remastered this one, as you have heard. Like, the audio is not what you are traditionally used to when you hear Brain Cake. So, I apologize in advance. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter if I apologize in advance. You done heard the goddamn thing if you're this far in. But if you are this far in, I very much appreciate that you went back and you heard this and you heard Jer and myself, especially in our rawest, most primal podcasting forum? Question mark? Um, I'm not real sure how else I could follow up on that, really. Um, he and I have both changed a whole lot. Not that I... I have, am even trying to defend anything. I'm just stating it was seven years ago, folks. If you found something to have issues with, it was seven fucking years ago. So uh, I guess there's that. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for listening to this episode of Brain Cake, and we will catch you next Thursday. Same bat channel, same... Ah, fuck it, I'm not ripping him off. Sorry, Adam West. I'm so sorry. Uh, later, folks. <laughs>